A lot of people are wondering right now, how come India, the most populated country in the world, doesn't win more medals in the Olympics? Here's 10 possible reasons why. But is it also fair to question why other people are not good at software and cricket? Maybe you just get good at what you value. Oh, all right, guys, we did a lot of research on this. And yes, because it is the time of the Olympics and India for a very big country is not ranking very high for how many medals they've won. We had to do some research into this question on why India isn't better at sports. Let's run the clip. In a country like India, where everyone is struggling for a single job, we have 5,000 applications for two jobs, that sort of thing. In a country like India, when, where there is so much artificial scarcity of resources, it is hard for a country like this to develop sports people because first of all, people may not be able to get the right kind of facilities, the right kind of coaching, the right kind of training, the right kind of medical uh, uh, attention, the right kind of nutrition and all that. The government doesn't care. The sports bodies are all corrupt. Boom. So this question pops up uh, around Olympic time, what? every three to four years. However, um, I feel like this time it's a little bit different because a lot it, India is now the most populated country on earth. Right. And as you can see, as of right now, as of filming this video, the Olympics are still going on, but they have about three bronze medals so far, and that's about it. And so that's why I think it is fair to kind of go over the possible reasons and what the future of sports looks like in India, because it is true. They are the most populated country. And the other very populated country, China, they rack up the medals. Also, Russia racks up the medals. America does. And even smaller countries like South Korea racks up right, the medals. Right, right, right. But Russia basically got banned this year. Anyway, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Um, Andrew, at number 57, that puts India with Tajikistan, Dominican Republic, Moldova, Tunisia, Mongolia, Fiji, Ethiopia, Denmark, and Armenia. Mm, yep. Whereas the top 10 go... United States, China, France, Australia, Great Britain, South Korea, Japan, Italy, Netherlands, and Germany. Right, and if Russia was in the Olympics, they'd probably be somewhere in the top 10 right now. But anyways, I do want to shout out, because India has won medals in the past. They have won gold medals in the past. Uh, they won eight gold medals in field hockey in the past, and then one gold medal for the 10-meter air pistol in 2008, one gold medal for javelin in 2020. That was a pretty big deal. But other than that... They haven't won really any other gold medals. So I guess the question is, how come India isn't more elite at sports? They have so many people. They probably have a lot of talent in their country, but how come? But what if they put cr cricket and kabaddi in the Olympics? We are definitely winning gold. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that, David. Um, also, I heard that uh, the Western nations petitioned to change field hockey from a grass field to a turf field, and that was a big issue as well. All right. So, guys, we have 10 reasons why. We've done a lot of research. It's not just coming from my brain. We re I read a lot of articles. I watched a lot of other videos, even from Indian YouTubers and reporters that were kind of talking about it. And so these are 10 possible reasons why India isn't as good at sports on the global stage as they could be. Right. Point number one, underdeveloped sports systems, lack of funding, AKA the government doesn't really value it, right? Because the central, uh, well, uh, any sort of government sort of makes hard decisions on how to distribute and deploy funds, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this is the single biggest reason is that the Indian government hasn't figured out a way or hasn't decided to, uh, and maybe they value other things as we'll mention, but the Indian government basically has n did not build a lot of sports infrastructure. And now that uh, India is crowded, I think it's very hard to. For example, China, obviously they rack up the golds. They, they very care much about the Olympics to a point where you, know, you could criticize them for it to an extent. But in the 1950s, China government uh, made a decision to build up a lot of sports infrastructure, aka parks, a lot of courts, right. a lot of sports complexes were built in the 80s and 70s, and they promoted sports throughout the country, and that really got things started. Well, you can find these videos of old people just doing like sort of some interesting looking calisthenics and like pull-ups around various public parks in China all the time, right? Yeah. Um, I will say this, though. India does have a space program, and there's a lot of other countries that are way smaller that win gold medals that don't have space programs. Exactly. Guys, we're not saying gold medals means everything for your country. We're just trying to address the sports issue here. Right, right, right. Point number two, Andrew, this was a really interesting one because I don't know much about this sport, but they uh, a lot of people on the internet in India, outside of India, but from the Indian diaspora, they were saying they focus mostly all of their resources on cricket. 
Yeah. So here's the thing. Cricket is a big sport in India. All right. Over 5 million people play it, which makes it the singular biggest sport in India, but also on a, compared to other countries, 5 million people is not that much. Um, but they're pretty good at cricket. They're about generally rank about third overall in the world. So they are more elite at it, but here's the thing. Cricket is not an Olympic sport, and it doesn't win you gold medals. Right, right, right. Australia is still considered uh, the best cricket country, huh? Yeah. Dude, Australia, I'll tell you this. Australia and South Korea, really small populations, massive sporting cultures. Right, right. And I don't, I don't want to say that the Olympic sports are the only sports that India plays. I mean, it, Indians may have their own local sports that are super regionalized, you know, that are more niche, I guess, on a global scale, but they're just not Olympic sports, so you can't win medals. And they're not maybe global sports, such as, like, you know, basketball or soccer. Yeah, this made me actually watch a couple videos on Kabaddi. It looks pretty fun. Dude, Kabaddi no. looks fun. Yeah, they, those things are flying fast. Point number three. Many poor people in, in uh, there are a lot of poor people in India and there's no middle class and you need a middle class for sports systems. For example, Australia is super middle class. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess Australia, depending on what you're comparing it to, it could be considered upper middle class. But yes, they're considered a have a strong middle class and middle class people like sports. I think you need a strong middle class to really care and support pro sports for to organic pro, development though. yes to support pro sports teams to have a little bit of income to spend on sports and enough where their kids don't only have to worry about working like 12 hours a day they can go off and enjoy sports you need a middle class for that and to be honest india is still very poor in many parts of the country obviously their poverty rates have been going down consistently so good job to india but it's, but, it's but, really but Andrew, what about India and, I mean, I'm sorry, China and Russia, also not known to have stable Western tier middle class incomes, but, you know, obviously have been performing in the Olympics for quite some time. Well, that's going to come down to incentive. Obviously, I do think China does have quite a bit of a middle class, but since their sports structures are so built in to schooling and stuff like well, that. state sponsored. Yeah, it's state sponsored and it's not just state sponsored. It's, it's pushed by the state that people be physically fit, you know, and that's gonna, I think it's also for the military to keep people healthy for the military as well, but also just in general for health. Right. Russia has been super dominant at the Olympics for a really long time. Yeah. And I would say that it's not, that's not the most appealing place for somebody to move to. Right. I'm not saying it automatically makes your country better just because you win gold medals, but. Well, it just shows what you focus on and have the capacity to focus on and what your leadership has decided to deploy and distribute to focus on. Right. Point number four, esports could be good in India, but it's also not recognized on an Olympic level. Listen, I mean, obviously we understand that India graduates a ton of engineers, a lot of software engineers, a lot of, you know, they're good with the computers. So I would guess that their esports teams are pretty good. I'm not super familiar with it, but that's also not an Olympic sport either. So they're not going to win a medal for that. But if the hackathon was an Olympic sport, we're coming in number one. Dude, I'll tell you this. If it was the spelling bee or the world championship spelling bee or... or, or right. <laughs> I would say this, like, you know, it's interesting if you take a look at it, oftentimes the East Asian countries, which are getting a lot of medals right now, they're doing it, uh, it in things that don't have like sheer size or power as much archery, for example, air pistol, you know, that's a great way to get golds. And I could see that that could be a way for India to look, but right now they're right now possibly focusing on activities with even lower athletic output than air pistol. Mm. What do you mean? No, I'm saying like spelling bees and stuff. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm saying that there's, but obviously like, it's not like uh, the East Asian countries are winning like track medals. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I would say obviously table tennis, things like that. These things do take physical abilities for sure. But yes, they may not be the tall, big person sports. Right, right, right. right. That's why it was so crazy when Su Bing Tian was uh, doing his thing in the yeah. 100 meters, right? Point number five. Not enough Indian athletes have won a gold yet to inspire others to gain support to essentially change culture. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of people are looking to see if, like, a more Indian athletes can achieve this elite level of athleticism in the world, and then it's going to inspire more people. Maybe it has been, maybe the few gold medals and the medals and the athletes so far have inspired some people, but maybe the sports systems aren't there yet and a mass amount of people, a uh, mass amount of kids are not trying. Because obviously, listen, to be an Olympic level, you got to start your sport at a young age. 
I don't care what it is. You have to start at a young age and get that much experience in it to be that elite. Right, right, right. There's nobody like on the level of uh, like the actor Khan, Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah. I'm saying nobody is achieving that level of fame and notoriety and positive sort of image through sport. Right. Other than obviously a cricket player. Uh, number six, studying or doing business is a much more viable thing to do because obviously if sports don't work out, what what what's going to happen to the athlete's uh, future career prospects? No, and this is a completely legit point from like a parent standpoint. Even who, Asian American parents feel this way. Yeah, to have a kid, if, if it costs extra for that family to put their kid into sports because, you know, maybe sports is not built into every single school in India. If you have to pay extra for an outside team, that's not worthy for you. You're just going to say, yo, just, just focus on academics and then go get a job and make more money or, for the family. Or not only that, if you develop STEM skills, like being a top level computer software engineer, you could go to Australia, UK, US, Canada, and eventually move your entire family over there. Yeah. I mean, you know, to be fair, what happens when you are an athlete that fails you probably don't have as many opportunities as a person with a software engineering degree. Yeah, usually you got to go into coaching or be a part of the uh, stability infrastructure of that sport, right? Point number seven. Um, these are interesting points that I found from the internet. Andrew, India has a really hot climate and a really crowded city planning, so it makes it unideal for training outside. Yeah, and I think now that the cities are so crowded and it's so hot that building a bunch of these courts whether it's tennis courts or basketball courts or soccer fields or football fields or maybe not football because they won't play football but like building all this infrastructure is not worth it because city planning is so hard especially in the big cities now maybe there's a chance in the suburbs where you have more space you could build more sports complexes and take up a little bit more space and build like these gyms or community centers to you know that can garner talent and, and harness the young talent but uh yeah it seems uh, training outside is it's hot and that's why actually a lot of great athletes in america come from california and texas because although it can get pretty hot it's actually still pleasant enough for you to train outside especially in california oh man they have some super elite um sports training facilities i've seen in texas yeah like really for like elite right. elite elite athletes right but but i'll say training in california you could train outside in california almost all year long especially well, if you're in like central california well here's the truth and a lot of olympic athletes from other countries even like for example the sprinters from jamaica or like the caribbean countries they they live in the u.s but they run for another team of course so yeah. what actually india could do and I'm skipping the solutions already here, is fund a bunch of players, uh, Indian nationals, to be trained overseas. Yes. And still still go to the I, Olympics. I'm training. sure they do that on some level, but maybe maybe they could ramp it up. Right, right, right. Or get uh, convince the Ambani family to sponsor a couple of them. Yeah, man. Then you got, they got a few extra dollars to spend. Um, number eight, the, the Indian diet is often considered low in protein. Yeah, so this is going to be something that, uh, first of all, I like Indian food a lot, but I'm going to say this, like there's not huge pieces of meat usually, you know, and, and even from this Pew Research study about India, uh, they said, and the, this is the Pew Research said, 81% follow a restriction on meat in their diet. So here's the thing, if you don't have a lot of meat, it will mean that your muscle growth won't be as fast obviously as people who eat a lot of meat and as you can see the countries who are really into sports they also happen to have a lot of meat in their country australia big beef producer america big beef producer japan eats meat russia uh, you would guess eats meat right china south korea china eats meat, netherlands yeah. i mean germany was on there a lot of sausage yeah i know i mean i mean no yeah i mean a lot of people eat just a lot of meat there for sure in, in a variety of meats um, number nine, professional sports leagues are just not as highly paid. And um, obviously right now, the only one that's highly paid is cricket. Yeah. So I, I, if your professional sports athletes in your country aren't even that highly paid, it's probably not that encouraging for a bunch of people to pursue it. Now, I'm not saying every single kid should try to be a professional cricket player. Like probably a lot of kids in like, I would, I would guess in other countries, they all want to be like professional soccer players or obviously in American basketball. A lot of kids want to be professional athletes in America. But I'm saying when the highest paid cricket player, his contract 
for cricket, Virat Kohli is only a million dollars, which is a lot in India, but not a lot for the highest paid athlete, you know, and he's made most of his money off endorsements. It's going to show you that there's not that much money in it, basically. Right, right. Like, even though cricket is the number one sport, his contract is only like around less than $2 million. Yeah, he looks more like a warrior version of uh, Hassan Minaj. Right. (laughs) Number Uh, 10, uh, major religions in India teach people or stress people to be uh, more nonviolent, such as Hinduism or Buddhism. Basically, a lot of the the faith-based systems there, they don't stress physical competition. Yeah, so this was... I'm not an expert on, we're not saying we're experts on, on Indian religion. Please, you guys, correct us in the comments down below. Yeah, we got these actually from Indian subjects. Yeah, I saw, this as a, I saw this comment multiple times from people whom I believe are Indian. So I guess this is something that they were attributing it to. So this is a possible reason is that India is a very religious country, very spiritual, right? A lot of Buddhism, a lot of Hinduism, a lot of Sikhism, a lot of different cultures, uh, a lot of religions and I think well, dharmic religions, dharmic religions that which are generally teach you to, I guess they stress nonviolence, right? I mean, yeah. And so I guess the thinking is that if you're nonviolent, like you try to be like Gandhi and all chill, then it doesn't make you want to compete with other right. people. Well, as well a lot of people say that, especially like team contact sports, there is some like paramilitary element to it. They, it does remind people of war, right? Yeah, you are going to combat and yeah. fight fight another team. Well, that's why America and China are, like, beefing so hard right now because there's, like, an economic thing going on. There's, like, geopolitical thing. And then all of it is coming out in the Olympics, too. Well, the also, Olympics. I will say this. If you think about the strong military countries, they also win a lot of gold medals. Guys, think Russia, Australia, America... Japan did obviously does have a strong military. China has a strong military or Japan did have a strong military. So I'm saying like all these countries, it's like the training systems to win Olympic gold medals, I guess is somewhat related to military power. Right. Well, it's just about infrastructure and systems in general, right? Obviously there is a few exceptions to that. Jamaica does not have a really strong military. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Kenya. That's true. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But yeah, the big countries at least. Anyway, let's just get into the comments section. Um, somebody said sports is merely considered entertainment and not necessity. Why Why do we need it? Why do we need it? Yeah, we- no, I mean, I think this is a fair argument. Listen, maybe sometimes in America, we love our sports too much. I think there's a legit argument. I think <clears throat> maybe too many kids want to be pro athletes in America. But, but isn't that because Americans almost feel like they've accomplished everything else? So it's almost like they're just there's nothing left to flex on each other with. Yeah, no, for sure. And, but obviously we also value staying physically fit. You know, a lot of football players are known to be going to the military and stuff like that. So there's definitely a funnel system and it's all related, you know, but yeah, I mean, is sports necessary? I think physical fitness is necessary. And if that leads to great athletes, global athletes and gold medalists, then good. But right. no, I don't think India should all of a sudden uh, put like a billion dollars into this. This guy said food facilities, fraternity, family, funding, fitness, and focus. And somebody said, yeah, don't forget corruption by all the governing bodies, by the way. He said, oh yeah, let me just add that F in, fraud. Guys, I don't- This this is a multi, uh, all the words begin with F, but it's a multifaceted way to just basically quickly explain all the attributes you need to have your bars up on. Hey, listen, I'm not an expert on Indian politics. But apparently, there's a lot of corruption going on. Right, right, right. Um, Somebody was saying, for example, this Indian guy said, I want to be a cyclist, but there's no academy in our area except for cricket. So there's no hope for me to become a cyclist. Right, They focus on cricket. I mean, I guess, I don't know, being a decent cricket player is maybe not that bad. I don't know. Right. Um, Other people were saying it's genetic because obviously there's this whole thing out right now on the you know, about South Asian genetics, or is it good for sports? Is it bad for sports? Other people were pointing out the extra long Achilles tendons that uh, oftentimes is attributed to East Africans, like Kenyans really winning a lot of uh, long distance races. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I guess, but honestly, there's a lot of non East Africans that are really good at sports too. I mean, so it's not just that, but yeah. No, I think that Genetic differences can account for some small differences, but not as much as culture. Culture is ultimately going to dictate systems, and systems and culture and values outweigh genetics. Yep. Um, somebody said, it's such a shame for the world's highest population country. 
you, I mean, a lot of people are stressing that aspect. Yeah, I mean, I just think it goes to show you that maybe there's just imbalances and maybe India is not the... India is really good at certain things, right? Obviously, like we said, like computers, software engineering, really high, you know, a lot of, lot of brains and a lot of good medical uh, doctors coming out of there. But yeah, you know, maybe that's where they put their focus and they just don't, they don't have the energy to put it into sports. And maybe they're just focusing on what is for our country more important right now. Right, like we said, their space program went to the moon. There's very few countries on Earth that have a space program that has reached the moon and landed on Hey, the moon. they go into the moon, but they're not winning any gold medals. Right. Um, this guy said, you know what, man? At the end of the day, everybody is trying to be so academically fit in India. It just, it's not really producing Olympic winners. It's more uh, producing labor for other developed countries. Mm. Now, well, obviously, this was a very critical comment from an Indian saying, like, our system that we're raised in is just producing good software engineers that's goal it is to leave India. Wow. Yeah. I mean, listen, guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I mean, ultimately, I think that this was a good exercise in the sense of there's a lot of reasons for a lot of things, Andrew. When I was growing up, I always wondered why, like, you know, I guess why Asian guys couldn't be considered cool at school or why couldn't, you know what I mean? Like, just the whole Chinese American experience was like lacking in this area. It seems so lopsided, mm -hmm. but guess what, Andrew, the truth is there's always like seven to 12 reasons. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I thought it was really interesting to do the research and, and look into this uh, because people, you know, every Olympics, you know, obviously India is a huge country and they don't win a lot of high medals, but I think like now I kind of fully understand. I mean, Listen, these might not be all the reasons. You might disagree with some of the reasons. That's fine. I mean, I'm not saying these are de facto reasons, but these all kind of have some logic behind them. So I guess my overall thing is like, you know, if I was India, uh, if I was the Indian sports, like uh, uh, what, the head of sports in, a, in India? Commission. Commissioner of sports in India. I don't know if I would really be tripping about this. Like, I think at the end of the day, I think what you should be focusing on is the physical fitness of people, but don't worry about the gold medals, man. It's like you already be in India. You're already, you know, starting to eliminate more and more poverty out of your country. You're already like bringing people up out of their situation and, and graduating more and more like very smart people. So it's like, I don't think the lack of gold medals should bother you, but probably it is something to think about. It no, is, yeah. I think it is a, a point of being I, I think like... it's an interesting exercise to point out issues. You could rank those issues and see which issues you have the capacity to change in like a priority list. Yeah. But, Andrew, do you think that it is true that it seems like white countries or quote-unquote white countries, you know, obviously they're not white as much, are the only ones that have it all? Because it seems like a lot of people are saying, yeah, East Asian countries, they train really hard, but there's so much pressure and the second they mess up, they want to jump off a cliff. And then it seems like like a lot of African countries or Caribbean countries, they have like these amazing gold medalists like Usain Bolt, right? But then people are like, yeah, the, this guy became a superstar, but the country's kind of poor. Uh -huh. But then European countries, they seem like they got it all. Well, I think that those, those developed European countries just have more security. You know, I think the more security and comfort you have, the more you can organically pursue sports and art, Right. Right. You mean have a fun life and have these amazing outcomes at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and if you fail and don't make it as an athlete, you still feel okay about yourself. That's all just security and and You're saying uh, the plan B like that you need a large pool of people trying where even the plan B doesn't sound that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if everybody's always like, well, I, I can't pursue being a, a professional cricket player because if I fail, I'm going to be broke and poor and living in dirt. It's like, yeah, well, if that's how you feel, then then don't do that. <laughs> so anyways, guys, uh, let us know what you think in the comments down below. I mean, I thought this was interesting, but uh, yeah, again, maybe not the biggest deal. India, you're still doing fine. Right. I think. I think you're doing good, so you know, also, keep doing what you're Also, by the way, Andrew, the new world countries like the USA, well, UK and France aren't, but they're sort of becoming like that now. Australia and Canada, Andrew, they have a high standard of living and a relaxed work culture, so everybody from around the world wants to move there to win golds for that country. Interesting. Well, they're immigrant countries yeah. versus obviously traditional. Population. But yeah, India, man, why why don't you start selecting some uh, top athletic prospects? You know, if they're about fifteen years old, send them to America, give them that top tier training, and just see what happens. Spend a little money, do it. Let's do it, guys. All right.
Uh, thank you so much uh, for watching that. Uh, please hit that like button if you guys appreciated this topic. Hit that super thanks. Uh, if you guys are into spicy food, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon or on the website right now. And until next time, we out. Peace.